What's going on, Keith? Wow, that intro gets us so hyped up. I love it. Ooh, that's, that, that's, that's the plan. <laughs> we, you know, we're going behind the masterminds. You gotta, you know. Yes. <laughs> Hi everyone, happy Friday. Uh, we're actually on the road today because we're on our escape room tour, our yeah. in-person tour. And it's hap- it's been like three days already. So we have uh, two, more uh, two more days left. Two more days left. Two more days of in-room. And Rhode Island. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, coming up in Memorial Day weekend, if you have time, uh, and you should have time because it's Memorial Day weekend, uh, four o'clock, we're going to go live uh, at... Um, Escapism, Escapism for their game Meltdown. Yeah. And this is our third episode of Escape Down Memory Lane. So you can tell us what to do. Boss us around. We'll be your avatars in the room. Yeah, mainly because <laughs> also you're going to love the puzzles. So you definitely want to tune in for that. For yeah, sure. <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right. So we're going to start with our program today. Today, our special guest is Keith from USB Escape. Yay! Um, <laughs> <laughs> love the t shirt, by the way. Thank you so much. I, I always think it's tacky for people to wear their own clothes, but hey, I'm a tacky guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> never tacky, never yeah. tacky. <laughs> uh, but we'll formally introduce him, though, after our weekly raffle. Right. Uh, today we have three to draw, so I'll give you give three a winners. little time here. Um, but our first one is from the, the these games are from the uh, Cocaine Cocaine's Crackers. Crackers. And our first winner for the 12th Street Theater case is. Is uh, Drumsticks, Theater. please! <laughs> and. All right. Robert Young. Robert Young, congratulations! Wow, yeah, 12th Street Theater case. We, we haven't even played that one yet. Uh, no. <laughs> Let us know how that one is. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, and up next is our winner for Edinburgh. Ooh, train the train bomber, bomber case. case. Oh, dramas again! Right. Who is it? Oh, Kyle Bob Fong. Oh, Kyle Fong, congratulations! Yeah, they're all coming. I love these new commercials. I know. Keith, I'm a little jealous. Your drum skills are a little bit better than mine. Yeah. I gotta be good at something, right? Can we collaborate? Let's collaborate. We'll Let's do it on two. Three, two, one. Our own band. Last one is for right. Fairlake Bank. Three, two, one. Ready? Uh, for the Fairlake Bank uh, Heist case. Bank Heist. <laughs> Fair, Fair Lake Bank Heist case. There we go. <laughs> Three, two, one. And the big winner is. Oh, oh, who is it? Matthew Louie. Matthew Louie. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Congratulations, Matt. Congratulations to the other winners as well. Yeah. Actually, right. Keith asked me to do the drum roll. I said I tried already in the last uh, and failed miserably. So that is why I'm not <laughs> no longer attempting drum rolls. <laughs> we all have our own set of skills. It's okay. Right. <laughs> all right. So our guest today is also from Toronto, Canada, just like our previous guest from Mail Order Mystery. Uh, seems like Toronto is the place to be for all these creative people. Like, what, what's in the water over there? What's going on? Honestly, probably stuff you don't want to drink. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it has anything to do with the water out here. But no, it's a great city for anybody who's looking to come up to Canada to visit. Um, not right now, because of the yeah. state of the world. But, um, but yeah, it's a great city full of really, really cool stuff to see. Okay. Well, Keith is the creative mind and the creator behind USB Escape. Mm -hmm. He comes from the business background with a deep passion for board games and take home escape rooms. Yeah. Um, So Keith, prior to USB Escape, have you created any other games like for any other companies or do you ever sell any uh, publicly? What's the background? Yeah. Oh my goodness. No. Uh, So this is my first foyer into anything related to this. Uh, I haven't done any games for anybody else. I haven't worked on any products for anybody else. I've just, uh, this was my first foyer into anything, anything. It's my first solo um, product that I've put out on the market. So this is the very first thing. So, oh, wow. wow. Yeah, it's like little baby. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And this was such an innovative idea. I mean, to have the entire game like on a built into a USB. Um, like, what inspired you to do this? Like, what, what, how did that come about? That's a great question. Um, what really inspired the USB stick is because, as I'm sure we've got into, and because you guys have played it, you know already, this is a horror-based escape room game. And one of the things that is kind of us- universally known about random USB sticks is never to put them into your computer because you never know what's on there. I really wanted to create a game that you could take home and kind of played with a little bit of that element of a 
USB stick that found its way to you um, that you don't quite know what's inside it and you're kind of taking this risk by putting it into your computer and whatever thematic horrors around it. Full disclosure, there's nothing malicious on there. There's no malware. <laughs> I won't uh, I won't send you ransomware or anything that. like that. Yeah. My computer still works. <laughs> right. Yep. And it's available for PC and for Mac. That's correct. Um, yeah, and I love how the concept, it, it makes so much sense. Like, you know, a detective is saying, all right, well, you know, I have some files here for you. Why don't you sift through them and, and see what you come up with? Here's the, here's, I put it on a USB drive for you. So I think the whole flow is just great how the intro works like that. Yeah. But what are some obstacles that you face when you started this new business though? Uh, so above and beyond this being my first foyer into anything escape room related, um, I would say that just realizing how much can go wrong with a puzzle. Um, so anybody, any of your listeners who have kind of created their own puzzles or have done a lot of puzzles know that when you put in a, when you're making a puzzle, there's kind of this idea that like, everybody's going to think like me, everybody's going to like see the natural flow of this and they'll kind of see where I'm going and they'll do the work and get to where I am. Um, I think that was the biggest hurdle right off the hop is that I would create these puzzles show them to my friends or beta testers or overlap for both of them friend beta testers and they would go way off into left field with some crazy conspiracy <laughs> theory of how to solve them and i'm like what no absolutely not so i think the biggest difficulty was to create a puzzle that was streamlined is not the right word but as direct as possible without making it obvious without making it dumb um but still make it have sense and i went through quite a few iterations of puzzles where i was like this is genius and people got their hands on it and they were like this is dumb and i fixed them <laughs> until they were somewhere in between genius and dumb right I mean, like, I feel like I gave you uh, somewhat of a feedback as well, like after we played it and I was like giving you all these like uh, theories that, you know, to come up with like, after I saw this, I I think it's going to be, this is going to happen. And but she does that happen. normally. <laughs> yeah. She like does starting that to direct what the next sequel is going to be already. Yeah. Like, I, just going to have to wait, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, watching a movie so. with her, like watching a mystery detective movie with her, this is what happens throughout the movie. Yeah, like, wait, I no, like, I already got the Who's that character? Yeah. What's that guy doing in the background there? Why is there scary music playing? Yeah, absolutely. You know what? And I love that. That's the feedback I've gotten from a couple of people of, you know, I'm so excited to see where this goes. And uh, I think one of the things that you'd mentioned in your early feedback, which for those uh, not privy to all our behind the scenes conversation, um, there was uh, quite a bit back and forth because uh, because you guys have played this game already. There was some conversation about, you know, what's going on? Is this the end of the story? And it's part one of three in terms of a series. So you can just end where you're at and it gives a nice little sort of ending, but there's more to this universe that's gonna continue in part two and part three as well. Um, so it's really nice. There is quite a bit. And some of the theories you put out there, I, uh, I had to chuckle and laugh just cause some of them were pretty close to accurate and some of them were way off base. So, oh no, uh, okay. I didn't hear the way off base yeah, part. Nah. <laughs> I was like, I told you I was on it. Nah. Um, <laughs> whoa. Well, for just like talk by talking tan wise, like because you know, we're we don't have our like green screen background because we're traveling this week, but yeah. um, because we played his game, I'm looking like in the back where there's a mirror right now. I'm kind of freaked out. I might do some stuff, <laughs> like, you might get some cameo. Like, I don't know what's appearances coming out of that <laughs> thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> some some spooky background characters for yeah, exactly. sure. yeah we'll, we'll see you'll have to watch the edited version of this and uh see if you get we'll play it back see if you, there was any uh <laughs> guest to, to be quite candid with you uh one of the one of the things that was really instrumental to to making this game is that the, the house that i'm in that i'm living in right now is uh, well over 100 years old it is super old super creepy and that's the house that you see in the game for anybody who's played it or you guys who have played it um and utilizing the natural environment is really beneficial to the game and the creative process because this place is horrifying at night i'm also out in the countryside a little bit so i'm just outside of toronto and uh just when the lights go out the closest street light you know so other than the moon the only source of light in a lot of nights is just down the block about um you know like a like a, a quarter of a mile kind of thing so wow. it uh it gets pretty dark here it gets pretty spooky here and you hear the coyotes and uh that just the general atmosphere has always been pretty creepy so i'm happy i was able to capture some of that in the game yeah i was gonna say like you can't get more authentic than that <laughs> did you just say you live there is that what you said 
that's the hell you I live I live in the house that that uh, the videos were taken in so uh, not to spoil too much but one of the videos um, is shot from my old room and walking down the stairs and um, the pictures you see in the background are the real pictures the stuff you see in the basement are the real things in the basement um, and uh, the, the funny funny little joke in the second puzzle some people tend to point out the picture of the little hockey player and yes that's <laughs> young me as a oh, hockey player as a okay. young child so though everybody who hasn't played the game right now is going what the heck is this guy talking about well but, uh, this is we're talking cryptic right, right now we, we want them to go check it out i mean it's uh, there's yeah yeah find out for yourself <laughs> yeah absolutely if you're not into puzzles and that's not even your thing but you just want to see what you know 11 year old canadian hockey players look like in uh in photos then th this game's for you so there you go uh we got some questions all right helen yeah. bailey hey helen uh she said can you get this as a digital download too rather than a physical usb stick that's a great question. I've had quite a few people ask me about it. The answer is no. Um, the The short answer for it is, I think it's just so much better as a presentation as um, with the stick and everything. The price point's really low in general and it doesn't take that long to get to you. So fortunately you're gonna have to bite the bullet, pay the money and have it show up at your house like everybody else. Gotcha. But if you're starving for those puzzles and you just want to see what my how my mind works before anything else on all of my social media, there's tons of puzzles that you can do just for free and uh, to kind of get that digital uh, that digital feel if you want. Yeah, to prep you for great what's question. To come. <laughs> she yeah. also said, uh, "How awesome is that to live somewhere that inspires your story?" Absolutely, um, it's so good. Yeah, uh, yeah. no, it's um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really awesome. I think one of the coolest things um, that uh, for this particular house, not to take up too much time with the story, but um, when we were doing renovations of this house, we actually found a picture in the wall of this old lady, and you can see it in the game. Um, uh, it's not prominently featured, but if you pause it and stuff like that, you'll be able to see it. And um, we've kept it around because we do not want to kind of move this too far away from where it originated. But we have this old creepy picture oh, that we found in the wall. So inspiration happens all the time in this house for sure. So Wow. Inspiration. Inspiration. <laughs> um, or she wants to know, do you ever get inspired from the feedback from your testers? Oh, absolutely. That's a, that's a great question, uh, for sure. Um, I think one of the greatest examples of that is that uh, one of the testers that I had um, wanted to rush through the game as quickly as possible. And then I'm, he was also doing it at the same time as his sister, who wanted to kind of write everything down and uh, search every possible uh, outcome. And that really inspired how I wanted to conclude the whole game in terms of leaving a lot more to be found if you want to go looking for it um, instead of just having a straightforward um, ending. So what that ends up being is it translates into there's your eight major puzzles, but there's actually 13 hidden little Easter eggs uh, in the form of puzzles or small little like cool little nods to different things within the game. So there's a ton to explore and that's all thanks to my beta testers. Wow. Uh, speaking of, uh, you know, having puzzles in some uh, on social media, like we've been met seeing your company mentioned in various like puzzle groups. The one feedback that, you know, we've seen people say is how can they trust that there's no virus or just anything that will harm their computer from this USB, uh, which you kind, kind of, of touched mentioned. on that as well. But, but have you gotten this type of feedback before? Like, and how do you deal with it? Like, what is your normal reply for something? Like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, I, that's a very valid uh, fear that some people might have. I think it's the same reason why we assume that, uh, a, you know, a toy gun is not loaded. It's the same reason we assume that uh, food that we ate at a gas station won't kill you, might make you sick, but won't kill you. Um, yeah. But the only steps that would have anything malicious is that if I put something malicious on it. So I buy from the, the actual USB keys for those who haven't seen it. Um, they look like this. They got my cool little logo on it. I buy them from the manufacturer. I have my game put on them and then I send them to you directly. So the only step where it could be caught, could have any effect would be from me. And that's not good business practice. Um, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't buy anybody's business from that. And my return address is right on <laughs> on the uh, on the actual game. That so is true. if there's a problem, people would show up in my house with pitchforks and torches and stuff like that. Right, right. I don't know if they want to show up in the house after seeing. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to come visit you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, not let, a tour site. let him have this one. <laughs> I'm okay. I, I'll take the virus. 
um so oh you did you want to say that patricia said i love the idea oh, yeah. that you have hidden puzzles and easter eggs for people to discover within the game yeah keep them busy touch base on that yet but yes they yeah. are so i'm sure there's a, that's already a fan there <laughs> yeah um since owen was your first season of your game um not the fam uh the nas family chronicles can you tell us what's the inspiration behind story nine no need to give away any spoilers because we don't want that um because it's like too good to not like the audience to experience for themselves. Yeah, you need to experience yourself. Uh, I literally had like nightmares after playing. Like seriously, a little bit of a jump scares at night. And a so. couple of uh, <laughs> woken Brandons in the middle of the night. I gotta yeah. use the restroom, come with me. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a scaredy cat, so I get scared of everything. Um, but yeah, just let us know like what that, uh, you know, what that was, uh, what was the inspiration? For that. So the the original inspiration for the entire series was based off of around 2008 2010 um, story creepy pastas and a lot of that was a lot of inspiring because I grew up on those. So for those who don't know, creepy pastas are equivalently internet horror stories. A lot of them surrounded um, they they range topics, but from haunted video games to people living uh, in the in the walls in your house. Um, so I grew up listening to a lot of those, and I always really really enjoyed the the concept of the fear that surrounds you comes from within your house. I then overlaid that with um, a lot of themes around, you know, uh, how the fi family dynamic deals with things like loss and grief and how childhood trauma ends up playing a role in how you develop as an individual. So the overarching theme of the story is that Owen, the main character, is cleaning up the, the house of his mom who's recently passed away and how he's processing you know, getting rid of his, you know, childhood pro like items. Right. Um, and then the progression of the story follows for season two, which is going to be released this year, is uh, is going to be following his sister, Allie, who he's Ooh. been in communication with and how she ends up looking for Owen because he's gone missing since uh, at the end of season one, which isn't a spoiler. It's pretty obvious right from the start that something right. bad's going to happen. And then season three is going to be a nice little uh, throwback tying everything together and shows you what actually ended up happening to the mom and how she ended up passing away. So it's almost a prequel to everything. So um, wow. that's the overarching universe. And it just it plays off of instead of giving you a straight storyline like once upon a time there was that's communication that you have to infer the details in between. So do you know what happens at the end already? Or is this as you Absolutely. go, you're starting, yep. you already know. What is the name yep. of season two and three? Is season two Allie and season three is, what's the yes. name of season three? Uh, Deborah. So Deborah's the mom, Allie's the sister, and uh, and <laughs> Owen's the son. <laughs> so, comes yeah. Last. yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is how, like, just in case of anyone as, as scared as me, if you put your hands up like this, right? And then you like watch it through the, yep. the little like, crack what is the point uh, <laughs> it actually helps like i don't know why that is kind of it's like, psychological you're like i have money glimpsing like, this actually helps me i'm like oh yeah i only see a little bit of it so i'm not as scared you know what else helps <laughs> to completely turning around and not, <laughs> not looking no, I, at the but screen the thing is the curiosity is still there so i still want to see it I just don't want to see it like full on. Yeah, I and I can't I, even. I don't know if anyone has the same kind of like. I'm sure they avoid do. <laughs> but I can't even enjoy myself because this is hard. Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is she gone? Is, is it over <laughs> yet? Is it... No, just... but I, you should be proud of me. I, am... I played the entire thing on my own because oh, right. I own a PC. We did play on. Back, yeah, she's so. on PC and Max. We had to play in separate rooms. I was gonna go mess with her too, but I was like, let me not. Oh, you man. did mess with her? Oh, missed the opportunity. Really no. Yeah, so shaking the door no. handle or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still I... trying to solve puzzles at the same time. How is this gonna happen? <laughs> uh, we have one more question yeah. from Helen. She wants to know any other games in like in topics that maybe aren't so scary in the pipeline besides this story arc. Uh, thank you again for, for these questions, Helen. These are great questions. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do after these uh, three seasons. The main reason is I want to create a lot of value in the game. In the game. So uh, as you guys experience, there's quite a bit to discover and find in the game and, and utilize. And it's not just a you know one hour experience that you could technically do in 35 minutes if you're super smart. There is quite a bit of uh, content in the actual game itself. So these take about a year to 
to release. So I'm looking at 2022 before I'm finished the third season and then moving on. So I don't have an answer for you. I'm <laughs> thinking the answer might might be yes, but um, I'm always open to some really good theme ideas. Um, but we're going to just wait and see. I really like horror because I'm scared of everything. So there's yeah. a ton of inspiration for me as I go forward. I was going to ask you, is uh, horror your go-to genre? And that's why this is your first, like you decided to do this first. Right. So, yeah. It sounds like it is. Yeah. I, I absolutely love horror. Horror is, I mean, I watch a ton of horror movies. I'm inspired by a lot of that type of stuff, but I'm scared of everything. I mean, I'm going to let you guys let in on a little secret as long as you don't tell anything. I'm scared of frogs. I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm, not, I'm scared of frogs. Uh, I'm scared of everything. And I think that created a lot of inspiration for me to, to kind of really tap into my fear and really kind of put it into the game and utilize its creativity. I think if you have a good relationship with, with fear, then it's easier to, to kind of show people or put it into games. Right. It's kind of like what living vicariously do you as you're yeah. the person being scared. So we're reacting the same way, the way you- A would. little tidbit. And once again, I, I apologize for anybody who hasn't played the game already, shame on you. But uh, for those for you, those who have and you guys have, the video uh, at the end where I'm running up the stairs, that I was really afraid. Um, it was really sincere <laughs> um, noises yeah. of me being afraid. And I'm not doing that for, you know, uh, publicity or anything like that. Good I was very <laughs> scared because that basement is creepy, and um, you know the 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 actor that was in there as well did an absolutely amazing job. And um, yeah, and the the entire thing did end up giving me a lot of chills because we filmed a lot of it very late at night. Oh yeah, yeah. This is why we don't live in a house. Yeah, one of the <laughs> main reasons <laughs> when we first started dating, it was like, oh, where do you want to live when, you know, in the future? I'm like, I don't want to live in a house. She's like, oh, thank you. No thank houses, you. that's all. Yeah. yeah, houses for us, and especially we, like, I'm born and raised in New York, and then she, you lived in a house every now and then, but I, think I have. Preference wise, mm -hmm. houses just make noises. And it's right. like I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change my answer to Helen's earlier question. I my next themed game is gonna be a horror game, but it's gonna be centered in a hotel room or a condo. So <laughs> Ooh, he moved up, but but you know, but in order for those games to be made, uh, you guys have to purchase his game yeah. so that he would have enough funding to go to a hotel and a condo. Is is that <laughs> second? Is that other game featuring a married couple that likes escape rooms? I'm just curious. It sounds like you, you know what? I'm starting to get inspired. Like the more we talk, the more that I love it. Huh? Yeah. yeah, it's just. If only I knew a married couple that like escape rooms. Yeah, uh, yeah it's I can name so some other ones too. You don't have to use us. <laughs> as long as you don't, uh, yeah, brutally get murdered or something. I'm all good. <laughs> Well, I mean, if they want to... Oh, yeah. yeah, this is your chance. I mean, we're talking about how exciting this game is and everything. And if you guys are, what well, you guys dare, to experience this amazing thriller... You're going to have to type in... Type in. Want to play a game? Hey, was it. that good? Was that kind of... Uh, did good. I scare you? I didn't mean to sca scare you. The Katie. phrase. He can Just, hear it. Yeah. Sorry, one more time. What is... Want to play a game? Wow. Is that better? Yeah, okay. It Did everyone him, understand him, that? Okay. It didn't better the second time. It's also <laughs> down at the bottom of the screen, in case you missed that. <laughs> Want to play a game in the chat to have a chance to win the first season of the Knott's Family Chronicle, Owen. Mm. If you can't wait and want to order it now, of course, support a small business. Uh, USB Escape, it will generally say add this very cool. We didn't bring it with us. But, but it's right there on his uh, Yes, his, uh, cool sticker. Swag. Unless he has one. Yep. The cool sticker. Yep. In the oh nice there yes. you go <laughs> really cool sticker um in the order so I guess you can mention that in the uh, purchase section if you if they type in our yeah. escape the rumors or something in the notes that you all just uh, add yeah that if you them. to be quite candid anybody who orders within the next forty eight hours I'll put a sticker in because I all assume that you came from here anyways um, so tell your friends even if they're not watching the live be like hey you should have watched the live because it was amazing but yeah. because you didn't and I'm a good friend just anybody who orders Absolutely. I'll make sure that there's a cool sticker in there as well keith also you better verify the spelling or name right caps escape the <laughs> room <knows>. small <laughs> I, know. E I know i know <laughs> yes <laughs> I'm really scared. Scared. <laughs> with that um right so i mean there was a lot of usage of photos and videos in that game that like made us feel really like, yeah. it felt so real to us and now i know why 
Yeah, in, I mean, because <laughs> I was gonna ask about if there were stock footages, but they're not. Yeah, but without <laughs> any spoilers, like, can you just share some stories about like the creation of the game? Like, I know you kind of went into it a little bit, but because we feel like you might have like scared yourself like more than just a few times while doing this. So yeah, there's definitely quite a few instances that scared me, but uh, while I was creating this, but I think one of the the funniest moments while creating this is um, I had to ask for a couple of unique objects from people. So one of the puzzles has a fox skull in it and a doll's head and um, and the uses of some very prickly bushes to make some you know ornate puzzle pieces and kind of gathering that up from um, the local resources uh, was a very unique situation. So I had to go ask one of uh, one of my friends uh, in the neighborhood, their daughter I know had a fox skull. So I said, I, I no particular reason, but could I borrow your fox skull for a photo shoot? Um, and that was that was very interesting because I, I it's not that I have a bad um, a bad reputation with my neighbors. It's just it was, it's it's always been a unique reputation with my neighbors. And I think I solidified myself as the eccentric neighbor for for them so right because yeah. most people will probably be like can i borrow your uh salt or sugar mm -hmm. or flour have a cup or of sugar or something like that yeah, yeah. we'll trade yeah um yeah. and then for the yeah. filming of season two i needed more um more skulls because i was utilizing them as well um and i i um was able to procure them from somebody else as well so um there's quite a bit of me asking for some very unique things and then of course because i'm filming and shooting around where i am i for the season two i had some hikers up where i was and i was filming with with uh my my, my film crew and i had to be like hey just so you know when you walk through the forest here there's going to be some skulls hanging from trees and stuff like that just just keep going <laughs> it's fine it's for it's for Nothing this to see here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing to see. So yeah, I I feel like I have a bit of a reputation, um, if nothing else. So <laughs> wow. well, they're just gonna say, oh, that's that's Keith being Keith. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just like surprised that you have all these skull suppliers out there. Like yeah, normally, uh, a lot of taxidermy uh, going on. Over randomly <laughs> uh, finding these skull suppliers, but you you do have a couple of people out there that's helping. Yeah, I mean the the spooky answer is you know a, you know a good puzzle creator always finds resourceful friends. But to be quite candid, I do have some very uh, I have quite a few naturalist people uh, in oh, okay. in my uh, uh, shout out here to Patricia, who was one of the people who was, uh, commented a little bit earlier. Whoa. Um, was uh you know they're able to to set me up with some of the people that um that were able to do this and it was all done humanely like these they, you know we didn't none of these were hunted these were all um you know per, you know gathered um yeah. in very natural ways so um I'm, that one of the one of the things i'm very like conscientious of which wasn't your, your original question but i i want to make sure that all of my games have very low impact on anything environment related because um somewhat passionate about that so karen said you know anything involving doll heads has to be scary definitely and i do want to point out one more thing because karen made a, a specific request for a particular dance move from me which i will do for you karen if you come watch escape down memory lane episode three. Oh yeah the cabbage dance yeah so if anybody <laughs> wants me to do specific dance moves in the meltdown room on monday you got to come see us and tell me what to do. Nice. Sorry, just want to get that out there. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm already signing up for that. I want to see the cabinet dance. I've never seen the cabinet dance before. <laughs> um, tell us a, a little bit about feedbacks uh, that you've been getting on players. Perhaps the one you mentioned about uh, your game was broken. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a really great one. I um, So... Being a small business, being a, an individual, I don't have a you know a tech support team. I don't have customer service team. I'm not Amazon. I don't have a fulfillment center. So if you message um, my Instagram or my TikTok or my email or Facebook or you send a carrier pigeon, you're talking to me. <laughs> um, and so I get a message at around 11 o'clock at night one night from somebody who had bought my game says your game's broken. And that's all it said. And this was very early on in the game being released. And I proceed to have a meltdown and go through all the thoughts of maybe if I just shut down the website, nobody will notice and it's all over. I'll refund everybody who's bought a game and I'll just go cry in a corner or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I very calmly respond to the individual, say, hey, send me what you've received as an error message and we'll go through it. So we went through it and I am Googling like my life depends on it because 
you know, as my first game out there and I'm thinking everything's terrible. It is now one o'clock in the morning and I said, hey, just out of curiosity, when you typed in the password and gave you this error message, what password did you put in? And they said, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm putting down this person if they're watching. This is my favorite story and I absolutely love it. And uh, nothing against you because I've done far bigger blunders. But they said, oh, the password is AGQ4 exclamation mark 728. And I'm like, um, try this password. And I gave them the answer, the, um, the one and they said thank you have a good time or have a good night and because of the time difference they were just doing it like eight o'clock but it's one o'clock in the morning and i have to be up in you know five hours to get to work um and start my day <laughs> so i uh i then you know proceeded to stop crying and went to bed and had a really good night's sleep after that but um so i'm that's not to not to shame anybody who um to who has any questions or whatever i absolutely love talking with um anybody who's bought my game considering buying my game or or doesn't like my game but just wants to talk to me um so always check in with me um and i'm always more than happy to uh to kind of hear from you but I, that was an amazing story of me being really <laughs> worried right off the hop about my game being broken right especially like at the beginning like you said because you were like oh my god this maybe i like missed something right yeah, like, on, like right at the beginning then... too because that's like when not that many people have played yet so that's when the questions are coming like oh my god right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of uh, websites or like resources uh like do you like like that you consider inspirations for you like like yeah like what what do you feel like uh, is an inspiration for you when creating your game like are you talking about like what sources did i draw inspiration from in terms yeah. of like other experiences or mm -hmm. are you talking yeah um i've always been really passionate about args so alternate reality games um i recently did the one set forth by darren bozeman uh one day die he was the director of the saw franchise like two yeah. through six yes. um so that was like an immersive theater escape room augmented or alternative reality game so i've been inspired by a lot of those i like anything that's creepy and weird so like i said uh creepy passes are great if you have some time to just listen to a creepy internet story i always suggest you know checking out like russian sleep experiment is a good one and you can just put these into like youtube not right now because you're watching something stop yeah. continue this <laughs> but later um you know russian sleep experiments great ted the caver is a great story in there um and I mean, um, there's a ton that I'm blanking on, but if you type in creepy passes, there's a ton of things that you can see um, that are on there. But yeah, Ted the Cave is great. It's super creepy. It gives you that background chills and stuff like that. Um, there's tons to find out. Yeah. Keith, for somebody who gets scared a lot, you actually throw yourself into That's it a lot. That's me too. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> search on this like right after the show. I'm like, yeah, I need to see what's going on, even though I'm super creeped out. That's how like, <laughs> I, I, we are. We're like that. That kind of is like I'm scared, but I'm so curious. But she, I can't get her go, to go into a haunt, haunted house with me for anything. No, like she won't. no that's real a, is, Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And what I really wanted as one of the guiding principles for this game is that I didn't want this to be a jump scare. So if you look at like uh, a lot of movies, like the like the Insidious um insidious mm. franchise or whatever there's a lot of like big boo loud noises and i've never really been drawn to that because i'm gonna naturally react to a natural thing you know if something is loud and jumps at me i mean my body can't help but react to that i think true horror is really beautiful in the sense that it builds tension with creepiness and i think you can see that a lot in iconic movies and media like uh you've got things like the exorcist which didn't really do jump scares they built creepiness over their story building and it's mm -hmm. still talked to this day and i find a lot more of like current horror tends to be loud noises and flashes of something mm -hmm. scary in your face which i tried to avoid as much as possible for this game so i wanted to have more of a creepy build which is more of holding you know hands in front of your face rather than uh, a, a sudden reaction so yeah, i think there's a big difference in there <laughs> I totally, I totally felt it though that uh, build up, Not which right. I was very surprised that you were able to do with um, a, like a digital game. Because normally, you, when you say you talk about the movies, you have the sound to play with. You also have the scenery, right? You have like a lot of more like 
high budget things that are in there to make that happen. But from just a simple digital game and from like, you know, reading through just tiers of things to like peel open things slowly to be able to find that was amazing. Yeah, I also don't think you always need all the glamour and glitz to make a really scary movie. Like Blair Witch Project was like, to me, I still get chills watching it. And it was like the most simplest way of filming a film. No, when it first came out, I was like, wait, seriously? They filmed this like on a a, iPhone? On a camera or or handheld and... Yeah, and that was it. I I gotta admit that is the nicest way that anybody's ever called me poor or broke before. That's really you know, oh you don't need to have a high budget. Oh. You get you don't need to. No, I I I'm, I'm only teasing you guys. I really no, I do really appreciate that. I I didn't think that's what you guys were saying. By any no, stretch no, of imagination. No. Well, you but, have uh, two yeah. new customers that just purchased. Uh, hey, Helen, hey thank you so shipping. very much. Right after this, she's purchasing, and yeah. Matt. Supported oh. it and he's purchasing Already again now. did. Yeah. Thank All you right. guys so much. Please, <laughs> please, please remember that there's a difference between a Mac and a PC game. So if you accidentally click the wrong one, just shoot me a little message and I'll make sure that I fix that up for you. Also, if you're buying a game for somebody else or you want it for yourself, include some creepy details and I'll add it into the game. Ooh, customized. Mm, like yeah, that. yeah. He does have a personal note in the beginning too, which is really awesome. I, I just realized that our handwriting are semi similar in the sense where we were <laughs> Readable. Not readable. <laughs> I can scratch. Yes. Yeah. I. Yeah. I do. I, I do that. try to do a handwritten note to to everybody. So if you are buying this for somebody else and you don't want the general thank you um, note in there, just make sure you denote that as well. Um, but I. I do try to write an individual thank you note to everybody who is because at the end of the day you are taking a risk in you know supporting a small local business not local for a lot of you for people in england but a small business and a personal dream of mine so i really really do have a happy dance whenever somebody buys something i do really feel really warm inside when somebody decides to take a chance on me and i'm doing everything i can to make sure that i live up to all those expectations and uh if you just stay for the one game or you follow for all three if you interact with me or you know it sits in the drawer for the next couple of years before you play it i'm still so so happy and i want to thank everybody who has supported me and those who can't those who've just you know hit a like on instagram or checked out my dumb tiktoks or something like that <laughs> he's got he's gonna do his happy dance yeah i was gonna That's say what i heard an extra I, perk would be to yeah. get a video of that happy dance that's like <laughs> purchase right I, now uh, you will get a video of a- <laughs> that, that's a that's a uh, it's, it's, escape the rumors guaranteed there we go you know what no <laughs> extra season cost, two. A happy season dance, two, you know? two now i'm a lot of shoulder rolling that's, Wait, that's oh, the generation i grew up with right. shoulder rolling you, know? <laughs> you, ju- you just boosted our our views man that's that's just my parents logging on they're they're such big supporters so hey mom and dad thank you so much yeah oh goodness uh oh we do want to know though because uh we want to actually we want to see if your cute catty uh, kitty is here because we know a lot of the fans in here puzzle people all have cats as detectives and investigators to puzzles well i mean how many people have cats (laughs) who has cats that's in our viewers i know there's a lot of people that are cat lovers Type in cat emoji if you're a cat owner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let us know what happened that time with your cat. Uh, so I... Uh... <laughs> I have um, I have a I have a cat, and uh, I was doing this. I was doing a shoot, and it's particularly. Uh, oh, I, I've got my stories mixed up. I know exactly what you're talking about. So I was doing the. <laughs> I don't know what cat story was coming up. I had, I mean, because the cat the cat entered in one of my shots, and then you know, um, and then I, at the time where I was showing my dad, he goes, "Oh, that's great! You should put the cat in the game." Anyways, that's the dumb story. And I was just like, "Okay, yeah, no, I remember." So um, doing being. Uh, Creating this game to keep myself in the right atmosphere, I was revisiting a lot of these creepypastas, so I would be doing stuff during my day with a headphone in my ear, much like I am now, listening to these stories. So after a couple of months of working through this, I was, you know, very late at night doing, washing up some dishes. So I'm listening to these these creepypasta things, and I'm really creeped out, but I'm still doing the dishes. I gotta go to bed, and my basement door's open. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grown, grown man and i'm not afraid of anything but i'm gonna just close that door just just in case yeah 
just... My cat had gone downstairs and I didn't know this. Um, so I'm doing the dishes with one headphone in and the other headphone listening for spooky monsters because I'm afraid of them. Like right now. And the, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's 11 o'clock at night and the door pops open and I have my personal mini meltdown heart attack and <laughs> because I'm not expecting anybody else to be home or up at this hour. And it was, it was my cat coming out from the basement. So there's a truly, truly uniquely scary experience and I'm happy nobody was there to record it or whatever of me um, screaming in a very masculine way um, oh, yeah. <laughs> because I thought something was coming out of the basement to get me. Wow. wow. The cat must have been like... <laughs> you're, but you have a really smart cat. Your cat opens doors. Like it's uh, the, the door in itself doesn't always fully close and stay closed. <laughs> oh. It's an old home. There's there's tons of creaks and stuff like that too. The basement's not even fully leveled. It's yeah, it's oh, it's uh, you know, it's made for this. Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> the, the game like... wrote itself yeah. pretty much. Like all the material was there. <laughs> Every, um... Everything was sourced from right in here. So I for everybody who recently bought the game or everybody's played it before, you'll get to see stuff right from my area and. It's it's utilized and you get to really see a lot of the experience and the history around a lot of the stuff in the area. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Anna from Scarlet Envelope said uh, she just played the game and she really, really recommends it. Oh uh, man, this is so that? awesome. I spoke to Anna recently. She is so amazing, but it's so cool because I've been a fan of Scarlet Envelope um, for a long time. And it's really cool when like, it's like a notice me senpai moment. Um, so <laughs> I was really, really excited. So thank you, Anna, again, you are a rock star. Aw, that's great. Um, I always see that you have um, such great ideas on promoting your games in various ways. <laughs> what have you? What are some you've done for this game so far? Like, I know you said you had TikTok, and everyone should follow, by the way. He has a TikTok, he has Instagram, Twitter, yeah. Facebook. Yeah, you can find me basically on everything just at USB Escape. Um, I'm a huge fan of unique marketing strategies, so I recently uh, acquired quite a few ducks. So if you're on my TikTok, you can see the plethora of ducks that I have. Um, actually, I have some here. And so I got these little, little rubber duckies, and they squeak sometimes. Then This one's yeah. deciding not to. Um, but And on the bottom of them, I printed off a bunch of QR codes. So if you were basically somewhere around around me in Canada, you might just find one randomly in some random place because I have put them in places. Um, once again, be very conscientious of not to put them somewhere where it would be considered litter or anything like that. Very big environmental base background kind of thing. Um, but they are, uh, they have a QR code and it gives you a little bit of a mini puzzle that'll lead you before you end up uh, finding a couple other secrets and fun little things uh, to find. So I, I'm i a huge fan of interesting style marketing. And so I, so keep your eyes out for my little duckies somewhere. Um, wow. yeah, it's like geocaching yeah. starting right now. <laughs> <laughs> have you put them on the geocache like app yet or no? No, I want people to find them um, organically, and um, I we are in, in like a time of COVID, so I don't want to encourage people oh, to true. go out to find them. I do sanitize everything before I touch them, so I realize I just touched my little like this little rubber ducky, but this one's not going to go out unless it's cleaned out, and I'm wearing gloves and all that other fun stuff too. So uh, I wouldn't suggest putting it in your mouth, but uh, you know you can <laughs> you can pick them up. They're not they're not problematic or anything like that. But um, they are hidden around me in my area, and uh, there are some in some pretty unique pl places. That's mm, awesome. So cool. But I do want to ask you mm -hmm. though about that time when you, uh, you know, what happened to those uh, hikers or the late night runners that you had met during your promotional okay. <laughs> session. <laughs> that so was in promoting uh in promoting the first season so when i was just about to launch it i um had to go put a usb stick out in the middle of i wanted to put it out in the middle of the woods and do a live of me going to it uh, and that was the general plan so i am going out and i put down this usb stick um like in the like in the middle of the woods and uh, I am then walking out of the woods and there is a running group that is there unbeknownst to me. Um, so there is an interaction of me um, walking out of the woods in the middle, like nine o'clock at night in the winter. Um, so it's dark and cold and scary. And they're just going for like a late night jog. And they're just kind of a moment where they're like, are you here for the late night jog? And I'm like, 
N no, I'm I'm here to film something creepy, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was like a very awkward interaction between the the running group and myself. You, of like, oh, I'm not doing anything nefarious. You got a? You, did you get to sell a few copies of the games in them now? Um, truly, truly, quite candidly, I actually gave a free copy to one of them because they were, like I said, they were in my neighborhood. So I, I gave a copy to them, and I don't know if he's played it yet, but uh, he, he was definitely very thankful for, for having That's it. Well, nice. if you don't see him on the hike trails anymore, that probably means that he's played it. <laughs> that might be true. That might be very true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, kids, what are you currently working on right now? So oh, I'm currently working really on right? season yeah. two of my game. Uh, it's being released November 27th. Um, I give myself an annual timeline to um, get the games out. So November 27th, 2021, season two is gonna be out. Season um, uh, three will be a year from then. And uh, just so that I can really create something truly unique and, and beta tested enough so that there isn't any problems with uh, with any of the puzzles. That's the main thing that I'm working on. And um, I also recently started up uh, working with one of my friends who is blind and we are making, this is very early uh, stuff, but a, a, a RPG directly for people who are blind or seeing impaired. So wow. utilizing a system for that. So that that's just a little mini side project, but uh, USB escape is always gonna be my one true love. So I'm, uh, I put a lot of my time and effort into that. <laughs> you guys have already cost me quite a bit of money. I hope you know, I love you. I love your show. I've watched quite a bit of it. I, you know, I've been following you guys for a little while. And then when you guys were, you guys agreed to have me on, I was really, really excited. And I, I'd already watched a couple of your, you know, your, lives and uh i was like this is gonna cost me a lot of money but i gotta watch some of their stuff so you guys have already cost me quite a bit of money um so i know I, I, I absolutely adore you guys but there's some things that i just don't that. absolutely love yeah. about you guys it's Thank hurt you. my wallet yeah um but you're also going to meet uh, amazing people throughout absolutely the, the journey oh, yeah. so that's a big oh, yeah. loss that money can't buy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I have zero regrets across the board. I absolutely love uh, the the content that you put out and the people you have on here and you, you the way that you guys speak with passion. Actually, this is something I really wanted to know. Um, I, I really do appreciate that you guys have me here, but the biggest thing is that, especially with the last year and the way it's been for a lot of escape rooms, and stuff like that what you guys bring to the industry and i'm sure you guys know this to some extent is that you guys have really been keeping a lot of it alive and putting a lot of life back into it so uh, not that the escape room you know industry was you know it, it can't survive there'll always be escape rooms around but you guys have really really helped breathe new life into it so you know i really appreciate what you guys do and i know that i'm not the only one who feels that way so thank you guys for what you guys do oh thank, thank you. you thank you i have something in my eye <laughs> <laughs> no thank you so much. i gotta make up i gotta make up for making you guys scared so you know <laughs> you gotta make you feel something else yeah we well the reason why we do that is for people like you and other creative minds that we've come to know and uh you know build relationships with because there's just so much talent out there and there's so much awesome games that we've been coming across and finding that you know it yeah. deserves a voice definitely deserves a voice a spotlight just to showcase the work and all the passion that you put into it such as yourself like you talk with passion but we feel it in your work as well yeah for sure thank yeah. you thank you that means um, a lot yeah, and I think like a lot of the creators in here also agree. So they they're super supportive as well of everything, and they also support each other, which I love. Yeah, <laughs> about yeah. the industry. And well, the Miley, the escape rumor says so she <laughs> ran here literally, was playing another game and rushed back to catch this. Uh, this is so important. <laughs> yes, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> you got to be fit to be in escape rooms. You know, we don't. Okay. We, it's, it's gotta, you got to have good cardiovascular health. You know, it's it's good for the body. You know, that Absolutely. is true. Have you not watched the escape room of uh, the movie? You will. Well, you might like not survive if you're not quick. No, enough. it's all about up here. <laughs> I am, I'm I'm super race. excited for my upside down room where I have to climb across monkey bars to get oh, to the other side. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone who's uh, wanted to do more physical stuff, if you're ever in Boston, Border Board, Border is Board. The place oh to no, be. we have one coming up. Um, uh, time. No, oh, this is in Rhode Island. Yeah. Time Zone. Time which Zone. Is another one. Uh, the biggest time machine in that. We'll show you guys. Twenty-five portals. <laughs> so what we're gonna be in there for quite a while. Legs are gonna be probably not working at the end of the, <laughs> the day. Yeah. Um. All right. I think we are ready for the biggest segment of the show, of course, and it's called. Eat or drink. Eat or drink. Yeah. 
this is when your real nightmare gonna start. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> All right. Real nightmare starting now. <laughs> Let the nightmare begin. Yeah. <laughs> Here's where we're gonna test your memory on the details of the game Owen. Let's see how much you can remember. Yeah. What it, it looks like you already popped the top. Or sorry. Yep. I'm ready. I'm ready. Back. What are you drinking, Keith? I just got good old Guinness. Good old Guinness. You know, black and gold. Ooh. You know. Yeah. I love their branding. This the black Pretty. with the gold. It's a beautiful uh, can. Uh, I'm going with something that I've been kind of overdosing on a lot lately. Uh, I'm not sure who's tried this. It's the uh, it's Coca Cola with coffee. <gasps> this is the sugar it's free my, one. It's Wait, my go. favorite. It's my favorite. So, oh, you've I been mean, drinking this too? I okay. It's not available in Canada. I oh. have. I have a fan. I is my number one fan. Shout out to Allie if she's in here. Absolutely. Wait, love. Owen's sister? <laughs> it's uh, it's a different Allie. Okay. Um, it was it was she was. She was named before the original, the uh, the uh, my alley, but uh, but I only met her after I'd made the game, and she actually sent me coffee coke from the states, and oh thanks, oh, I love coffee coke so much, but it's not available in Canada. That's so, a good fan. That's a yeah. Really if you send fan. me coffee coke, I'll send you free games or you know work for you or whatever. <laughs> I want it. for coffee. I'll, I'll, I'll like, change your T-shirt for coffee coke. I love it so much. Now. Yeah, yeah but it's, here, let's start bartering. You know, this isn't for anybody else. Everybody's just. <laughs> There's no value for this convert, this life oh, or anybody else. We're just <laughs> well, I've had this already, but um, I'm gonna give another reaction while drinking it. That's only if he gets them right, right? Yeah. 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 If he doesn't get it right, he's drinking it's, the Guinness. If he gets it right, I will pull the tab back on this drink. <laughs> the audience can help you. Just oh, FYI. Yeah. Do you have a few, you know, that's played the game. They, so they can they help you. And some of them in here have played the game. So you have some help. You have lifelines. <laughs> and, Angela, right. and just selling for box one again. She's like, she's a representative of box one. She's like, do you want a box one as well? Because <laughs> that's what she's I She's going to send you some. You're going to get a lot of these man now did you put it out there this is yeah it's <laughs> it's i i can't get it here so i mean you know i don't do don't threaten me with a good time you can you send me a case i'll make sure you get all three seasons you'll never pay again you know like yeah wow. you're don't gonna get me with a good time. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna get caffeinated yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gonna be full of there's gonna be a there's gonna be a truck showing up in my house and yeah. dropping off pallets uh, you know it's, it's a good time for me Wow. You, you have 10 seconds from after CC <laughs> asks you the question. I have a timer here ready for you. All right, I'm ready Let's with do this. question one. All right, question one. What's Officer Canto's three digit police badge number? Oh no. Yes. Oh <laughs> no. I was so yes. ready. I was like, toxic. Okay. I know. Uh, you are. 643. Oh my goodness. What is 643? <laughs> I, that's I my. That's my that's my guess because I say that number a lot. Six four three. Oh. Was I right? You were so off. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, none of the numbers are. In yeah, there. No, you don't have one number. <laughs> Even if we. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I you, you had, had me there. Like, I was like, oh, I got it right. I <laughs> guess. No, oh. Well, I, I think I think the the audience wants you to drink because none of them came through for you either. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, it's. Blink 182. No, I'm uh, nice, <laughs> You I like, like that? that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just came out with that just now. <laughs> what? I'm actually surprised you know Blink 182. Uh, yeah, Her I pop know. Me culture too. like is just not. All right, sorry. <laughs> Question number two. Go ahead. Get them. Get them. All right. <laughs> What's the house number of the police department? The house number of the police department. Oh, I put so many small details in here. You ah. did. You know which. Oh, that you it's did all these that. numbers. Okay, let's go. Uh, six eight two. <laughs> I'm gonna drink. I'm preemptively. <laughs> he's, he's, you're already drinking. How does it taste? <laughs> Wait. Do I have? Was it um? <clears throat> you have one of the numbers. The was it seven four one? I know four, it's too late. Was it seven four one? Digits. Four digits. Four digits. Yeah. No, I don't have it. And you yeah. have one of the digits, but it's in the wrong place. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I, I, oh, no, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tap out on this one. You know what the worst part is? Is that I was so in my head. I was like, I'm gonna crush this because I've seen you guys play this game with other people. I'm like, I got this. I know my game. It's my game. I got it. That's what they you always. Guys, you guys are too good. You guys are too good. <laughs> Two sips out of this already. You're. I'm gonna have to drive myself home tonight, or get somebody <laughs> to drive me home tonight. I mean, I'm. 
I don't have to. This is gonna be bad. Oh my All right. Goodness. Well, um, we're, we're not we're not even halfway through. We're, we're, here's the third question. Well, three seven seven six was. The oh last yeah, answer. three seven seven six is the house of the. Yeah, it's it's the pin code to my debit card. That makes sense. Uh, but oh. it's not. Don't don't don't. don't. Well, we'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. See ya. <laughs> Gotta order some stuff online. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, all right, third question. Mm -hmm. What's the date on the last email that Allie wrote to Owen? It is, I've got this one, um, June 14th, 25th, June 25th. You've got it. The end of the year. No, June 25th, that's it. Oh, Wait. we're giving him without the year? Yeah. Oh, hey! 2017. 2017, yeah. 2017. Oh, oh, wow, yeah. 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 The date was there we go. All right. Time. Popping, I'm go. getting a little Happening. bit dehydrated, so I'm glad you did that for me, sir. Cheers. There you go. Enjoy. Oh, so lucky. Let's trade through the <laughs> internet know. here. I'll give you this, and I'll take that from you. There, so. there you go. Let's do a virtual uh, swap. Yeah. Cheers. Yep. Uh, cheers. cheers. Yeah, okay. sweet. Uh, Orsi's like, do not underestimate Sixty's questions. I know. Yeah, or she kind of, she felt the, the wrath the a little bit, and mm -hmm. she was drinking some hard liquor mm -hmm. on our show. Mm -hmm. All right, question number four. In the grocery store picture, what time does the store open and close on friday it closes it opens at nine and closes at four we will drink is together this like uh summer time we'll drink together <laughs> summer schedule perhaps? is that like no that's power that's but <laughs> we would have been the opposite power. they would have been open later nine to six right yeah, nine a little to later. <laughs> little, sorry, a little later. Nine, nine to eight. Cheers. We'll be together. You're at 9 a.m. Right. So yes. Cheers. Nine to eight. That's good. Yeah. Nine to oh, eight. You guys have the best questions. I did not. Oh, I underestimated you 100. Okay. percent Yeah. <laughs> They always do. <laughs> Orsi's or right. Yeah, there is. You guys are godless. Yeah, I'm out to yeah. get everyone. Yeah. All right. Well, we have the fifth question ready for you. This one, this one might be okay. Yeah, I, I, I have faith in them. You guys are going to ask me, like, what my great grandfather's dog's best friend was. And I'm going to be like, oh, oh yeah, um, I'm ready for this last one. Hold on. We got to change. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Give him the fifth hey, one. He'll be, he'll be really surprised if I found that one. I'll be a really good investigator then. Like, how did I dig that information out? <laughs> Fifth question. What's the last name of the digital forensics investigator? Oh! Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm going to go with nothing. I'm blanking. I'm going to go Steve. Oh, the <laughs> humanity. Sorry, what last was it? Last name. Last name. Uh, last name. Yeah. No, so it's Steve. no oh, I have no Steve? idea. Okay, we're going with Steve. Is that your answer? Actually, it's pretty easy. Wow, guess. audience, you guys really want him to get drunk. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> All right, well, it's Dr. Drink. Jay Greater. 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 Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the theme of why I've named which one's names, but I can't, I couldn't remember which character I named it after. So it's my oh, okay. fault. Oh. My is, fault. Is this, a, is this a named after a character from something? Uh, the the themes of the names for anybody police related is from Dante's Inferno. Oh, yeah. okay. Somebody's bugging. Sorry, us. our cat got oh. stuck. <laughs> here's, here's our cat. <laughs> your your cat is adorable. Hello, cat. Cameo, it's cameo. I told you it was be a cameo in the mirror. She just <laughs> came over here. <laughs> All right, so we do have a uh, bonus, Fun question, bonus question. Yeah, we're not going to time you on this. Yeah. We, we've tortured okay. you enough. <laughs> You have. <laughs> what, what is your favorite game genre to make, and what's your favorite movie in that genre? I mean, I'm gonna be boring and say horror. I really like horror. No, I mean, I like horror. puzzles, puzzles is that the genre? But um, favorite, if, if we're gonna just stick with boring old horror, I liked. I really like to make horror. But um, my favorite horror movie, uh, it, and it, it seems very horror adjacent. So some there's gonna be some snob out there that goes, that's not horror. But um, the platform is an amazing, amazing horror movie. Oh, I saw that Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Um, yeah. It's a Spanish film. It's called La Joya in Spanish. Absolutely life changing. Eleven out of ten. I would recommend it to my grandmother. You know, like it's that good of a, a, a movie. I, so I thought it was. Very, I don't think you saw it. No. This is during uh, the uh, uh, our COVID stage because oh, okay. I was. You know, we're both laying in our beds and we're both watching our own things. And I came across it and I was watching it and I was like, this is really interesting. 
It's a very different. I it's a one. psychological thriller. Well, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. All right. So we have a new a new uh, segment that I want us to play around with. It's called Cryptic Forward. So we're gonna ask our guests to leave a puzzle, a riddle, or something for our next guest to solve. So, Keith, do you have a puzzle or a riddle or something yeah. you want to leave for our next guest to solve? I, I do. I'm going to throw back to this is the first ever riddle I was ever introduced to. So this might be simple for a lot of you. Some of you might have seen it, but this is called the Johnny Puzzle. And um, so I'm going to put it out for the next guest and I'm going to show you how to do it. And then all you have to do is just copy what I do. It's really easy. So pay attention. Johnny, 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 whoops, Johnny, whoops, Johnny, 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 Johnny. Just do that. It's easy. Okay. I'll do it one more time just to make sure you guys got it because okay. it might be hard to remember. Okay, so pay attention. Yep. Johnny, 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 whoops, Johnny, whoops, Johnny, 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 Johnny. So let's see if you can do that exact same thing. We'll see. We will find out in the next episode. Make sure you guys tune in. We're going to see if our yeah. next guest can do that. Yeah. There's a, there's a, um, I'm assuming there's an answer to this. There is an answer, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll talk people. in private and I'll, uh, I'll maybe, okay, I'll, sure. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll so, it, audience, yeah. if you guys got it, just, you could type got it, but like, yeah. we're going to reveal the answer in our next episode. If you want to find out what it is, you're going to have to come on one. Yeah. We're going to see if our next guest. Yeah, you guys want to, you guys want to try right now to see if you can do it and see if you can copy the way that I do I don't want to really embarrass yeah, I'm myself. A, I'm going to try, I'm going to try, hold on. Johnny, 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 Johnny. Whoops. Johnny. Whoops. Johnny, 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 Johnny. Uh, so that's close, that? but that's not it. Sorry. Oh no! Darn it! Yeah. I thought I got it. I was like so confident. I was no, like, no, I'm you, gonna embarrass myself. I think you missed the Johnny. I missed the Johnny. No, you had all the Johnnies. You're fine. Oh, you all okay. Johnnies. My Sorry. God. <laughs> all right. Well, no, nothing gets past Orsi there. Orsi already got it. No. Oh, she's got it. Ah. Okay. All right. Well, all anyways, right. Orsi, you can't spoil it. Don't spoil it for our next guest. Everybody else is gonna guess. have to come back yeah. and watch in order to find out no. what it is. Um, well, thank you so much, Keith. This is so much fun. Um, we're so excited for season two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Season two. If anyone came in late to the show, and if you dare to try the the game, Owen, type in wanna wanna play a game. <laughs> Not a gamer. A game. Uh, yeah, that's that's actually your fault. I didn't realize that you're the one that did the. I made, I made the correction. I made the correction. <laughs> in the chat to be eligible to enter into the raffle to win a copy. And if you're watching uh, this video in our IGTV YouTube after the live stream, you can still enter the phrase uh, in the comment section. Uh, underneath the video. Mm -hmm. um, you can do so until we air episode 55 on June 11th. Once again, our partner for the mega giveaway this round for our 20 episodes is Momo Escape. And look for our hidden letters and numbers embedded in episodes 50 to 69. So, and then you can send us the answers uh, on episode, well, 30, 70, we'll be revealing the uh, yep. solution. Um, and we'll reveal also the winner. What, are, what? what do they win though? They win the whole oh entire, God, the entire first season? season? Or wow, games. games. But if you played it, you also are going to win. Uh, oh, you it? could choose a gift card and buy their entire season, season two, two. <laughs> which, which is pretty awesome because that's yeah, a big that's value a big there. Um, all right. So next Friday, we'll be joined by the creator of Extraordinary Investigators, Rod. Yeah. He's created a series of puzzle novels. I haven't really had puzzle novel people on here. This yeah. is why I'm trying to cover a big range of uh, games. Conspiracy thrillers where the story unfolds to the reading, solving puzzles, cracking codes, and following the clues. Um, and to find out more, you're going to have to tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. Remember to like and subscribe our YouTube and Twitch channel if you haven't done so. Yeah, and if you love Escape Rooms, remember on our IG oh, yeah. and Facebook uh, story right now, we're covering every single day of the place that we went to. You can get a quick sneak peek of all the um, Escape Room locations uh, that we've been to. And hopefully that will trigger your cravings for Escape Rooms again and go out and play some because a lot of them are open now in person. Yeah. Yeah, 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 oh, let's go. Locked in, 60 minutes to escape. escape. Think before you move, there's no room for mistakes. No. So you got what it takes.